Now, let's go back to the book's design. After years of battles, we see an aging Joshua, and he starts dividing up the land for the 12 tribes of Israel. And most of this section is like lists of boundary lines. And let's be honest, it's kind of boring. It's like reading a map that has no pictures. But for the Israelites, these lists were super important. This was the fulfillment of God's ancient promises to Abraham that his descendants would inherit the promised land. And so now it was all coming to pass right down to the detail. Joshua 16. The allotment of the people of Joseph went from the Jordan by Jericho, east of the waters of Jericho, into the wilderness, going up from Jericho into the hill country to Bethel. Then going from Bethel to Luz, it passes along to Ataroth, the territory of the Archites. Then it goes down westward to the territory of the Japhletites, as far as the territory of Lower Bethhoron, then to Gezer, and it ends at the sea. The people of Joseph, Manasseh, and Ephraim received their inheritance. The territory of the people of Ephraim by their clans was as follows. The boundary of their inheritance on the east was Adaroth Adar, as far as Upper Beth Horon, and the boundary goes from there to the sea. On the north is Mikmathath. Then, on the east, the boundary turns around toward Teanath Shiloh, and passes along beyond it on the east to Genoa. Then it goes down from Genoa to Adaroth, and to Neira, and touches Jericho, ending at the Jordan. From Tapua, the boundary goes westward to the brook Cana, and ends at the sea. Such is the inheritance of the tribe of the people of Ephraim by their clans, together with the towns that were set apart for the people of Ephraim within the inheritance of the Manassites, all those towns with their villages. However, they did not drive out the Canaanites who lived in Gezer. So the Canaanites have lived in the midst of Ephraim to this day, but have been made to do forced labor. Joshua 17 then allotment was made to the people of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Joseph. To Machir, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, were allotted Gilead and Bashan, because he was a man of war. And allotments were made to the rest of the people of Manasseh by their clans, Abiezer, Helik, Asriel, Shechem, Hefer, and Shemida. These were the male descendants of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, by their clans. Now Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Maker, son of Manasseh, had no sons, but only daughters, and these are the names of his daughters, Mala, Noah, Hagla, Milcah, and Tirzah. They approached Eliezer, the priest, and Joshua, the son of Nun, and the leaders, and said, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance along with our brothers. So according to the mouth of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among the brothers of their father. Thus there fell to Manasseh ten portions, besides the land of Gilead and Bashan, which is on the other side of the Jordan, because the daughters of Manasseh received an inheritance along with his sons. The land of Gilead was allotted to the rest of the people of Manasseh. The territory of Manasseh reached from Asher to Mikmathath, which is east of Shechem. Then the boundary goes along southward to the inhabitants of Antapua. The land of Tapua belonged to Manasseh, but the town of Tapua on the boundary of Manasseh belonged to the people of Ephraim. Then the boundary went down to the brook Cana. These cities, to the south of the brook, among the cities of Manasseh, belonged to Ephraim. Then the boundary of Manasseh goes on the north side of the brook and ends at the sea, the land to the south being Ephraim's, and that to the north being Manasseh's, with the sea forming its boundary. On the north, Asher is reached, and on the east, Issachar. Also in Issachar, and in Asher, Manasseh had Bethshean and its villages, and Iblium and its villages, and the inhabitants of Dor and its villages, and the inhabitants of Endor and its villages, and the inhabitants of Teanach and its villages, and the inhabitants of Megiddo and its villages. The third is Naphath. Yet the people of Manasseh could not take possession of those cities, but the Canaanites persisted in dwelling in that land. Now when the people of Israel grew strong, they put the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not utterly drive them out. Then the people of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given me but one lot, and one portion as an inheritance, although I am a numerous people, since all along the Lord has blessed me? And Joshua said to them, If you are a numerous people, 
Go up by yourselves to the forest, and there clear ground for yourselves in the land of the Perizzites and the Rephaim, since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. The people of Joseph said, The hill country is not enough for us. Yet all the Canaanites who dwell in the plain have chariots of iron, both those in Beth Sheen and its villages, and those in the valley of Jezreel. Then Joshua said to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, You are a numerous people and have great power. You shall not have one allotment only, but the hill country shall be yours. For though it is a forest, you shall clear it and possess it to its farthest borders. For you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have chariots of iron, and though they are strong. Joshua 18 Then the whole congregation of the people of Israel assembled at Shiloh and set up the tent of meeting there. The land lay subdued before them. There remained among the people of Israel seven tribes whose inheritance had not yet been apportioned. So Joshua said to the people of Israel, How long will you put off going in to take possession of the land, which the Lord the God of your fathers has given you? Provide three men from each tribe, and I will send them out that they may set out and go up and down the land. They shall write a description of it with a view to their inheritances, and then come to me. They shall divide it into seven portions. Judah shall continue in his territory on the south, and the house of Joseph shall continue in their territory on the north. And you shall describe the land in seven divisions and bring the description here to me. And I will cast lots for you here before the Lord our God. The Levites have no portion among you, for the priesthood of the Lord is their heritage. And Gad and Reuben and half the tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond the Jordan eastward, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave them. So the men arose and went, and Joshua charged those who went to write the description of the land, saying, Go up and down in the land and write a description and return to me, and I will cast lots for you here before the Lord in Shiloh. So the men went and passed up and down in the land and wrote in a book a description of it by towns in seven divisions. Then they came to Joshua to the camp at Shiloh, and Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before the Lord. And there Joshua apportioned the land to the people of Israel, to each his portion. The lot of the tribe of the people of Benjamin, according to its clans, came up, and the territory allotted to it fell between the people of Judah and the people of Joseph. On the north side, their boundary began at the Jordan. Then the boundary goes up to the shoulder north of Jericho, then up through the hill country westward, and it ends at the wilderness of beth -Avon. From there, the boundary passes along southward in the direction of Luz to the shoulder of Luz, that is Bethel. Then the boundary goes down to Adaroth Adar, on the mountain that lies south of lower Beth Horon. Then the boundary goes in another direction, turning on the western side southward from the mountain that lies to the south, opposite Beth Horon, and it ends at Kiriath Baal, that is, Kiriath Jearim, a city belonging to the people of Judah. This forms the western side. And the southern side begins at the outskirts of Kiriath Jearim. And the boundary goes from there to Ephron, to the spring of the waters of Nephtoah. Then the boundary goes down to the border of the mountain that overlooks the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is at the north end of the valley of Rephaim. And it then goes down the valley of Hinnom, south of the shoulder of the Jebusites, and downward to Enrogel. Then it bends in a northerly direction, going on to Enshemesh, and from there it goes to Galiloth, which is opposite the ascent of Adummim. Then it goes down to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben, and passing on to the north of the shoulder of Beth Araba, it goes down to the Araba. Then the boundary passes on to the north of the shoulder of Beth Hagla, and the boundary ends at the northern bay of the Salt Sea, at the south end of the Jordan. This is the southern border. The Jordan forms its boundary on the eastern side. This is the inheritance of the people of Benjamin, according to their clans, boundary by boundary all around. Now the cities of the tribe of the people of Benjamin, according to their clans, were Jericho, Beth Hagla, Emek Kizes, Beth Araba, Zemaraim, Bethel, Avim, Pera, Ophra, Kefer Ammonai, Ophni, Geba, twelve cities with their villages Gibeon, Ramah, Beeroth, Mizpah, Kephira, Moza, Rechem, Irpil, Terala, Zela, Heilif, Jebus, that is Jerusalem, Gibeah, 
and Kiriath Jearim, fourteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the people of Benjamin according to its clans. Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hogan. You can start winning with money. You just need the right plan. And we have that plan. It's called Financial Peace University, and it'll teach you how to save money, pay off debt, and spend wisely so you can start investing so you can build wealth like crazy. Over five million people have been through this program and are finally living without money stress. And you can too. If you follow this plan, if you focus and you're intentional, it works every single time. You can get your money in order. You can build wealth. And with Financial Peace University, you can start today. Several polls show that Joe Biden got an approval bump after his State of the Union address last week. And an approval bump is when Biden does a good job, so Hunter does a little cocaine to celebrate. Mm. What a bump is. <laughs> to protest the invasion of Ukraine, Pepsi, Coke, McDonald's, and Starbucks have all closed their stores and pulled their products from Russia. Experts warn that without access to Starbucks, McDonald's, and soda, the Russian army could become the strongest and healthiest the world has ever known. <laughs> And to show her support for Ukraine, Hillary Clinton has vowed to stop importing dossiers from Russia. <laughs> Vladimir Putin has been stripped of all his positions in the International Judo Federation. He's also been removed as president of the International Gay Horseback Riding Association. <laughs> Some elderly people who have trouble walking are being evacuated from Ukraine in wheelbarrows. And some Americans have started pushing each other around in wheelbarrows to save money on gas. <laughs> uh. Gas prices in parts of Los Angeles have passed $7 a gallon. It's all part of the Democrats' plan to make sure all the people they've driven to homelessness can't afford to live in their car either. <laughs> but not to worry, Joe Biden has a solution and has already announced a plan to get rid of $7 a gallon gas with $10 a gallon gas. <laughs> During a Mexican soccer game, 26 fans were injured after a massive fight broke out in the stands. Thankfully, we don't have massive soccer fights like that here in America because 26 people have never showed up for a soccer game. <laughs> WNBA star Brittany Griner is being detained in Russia after being caught with marijuana at an airport. So apparently... There is a such thing as a WNBA star. <laughs> a Quinnipiac poll found that Republicans were more likely to say they would stay and fight if America were attacked. Republicans will, however, flee California if a homeless person poops on the sidewalk. <laughs> as a way to funnel money to Ukrainian civilians, people around the world have been booking Airbnbs in Ukraine, then not using them. Said one Ukrainian Airbnb owner, this is great for our country, but terrible for my hidden camera sex tape business. <laughs> <laughs> the Batman made $130 million in its opening weekend, and he's already a billionaire. So once again, the rich get richer. Oh, that's so sad. In order to finally prove the British royal family isn't racist against black people, Queen Elizabeth met with Justin Trudeau this week. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal celebrated his 50th birthday this week in Miami. There was a party and a large cake where he blew out the telephone poles. <laughs> Police in Kansas busted a plan to sell $345,000 worth of fake Patrick Mahomes Super Bowl rings that were made in China. That's bullcrap. 
You're telling me all three of my one-of-a-kind Patrick Mahomes Super Bowl rings are fake? <laughs> the new incoming president of CNN has signaled that he wants to tone down the rhetoric against rival Fox News. He reportedly wants a truce, saying, we can join forces and spread lies and misinformation together. Together. <laughs> We're better together. A new study found that gay conversion therapy is harmful to LGBTQ people. Conversion therapy is the controversial practice of trying to cure gay boys by showing them the 1998 movie Wild Things. <laughs> <laughs> Police in Bolivia discovered a sophisticated cocaine production lab inside a national park, which shouldn't be surprising since it's called Big Cocaine Lab National Park. <laughs> A police chief in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, was fired for hiring and promoting minorities based purely on their skin color. Uh-oh, said Joe Biden. <laughs> That's it for the weekly news. If you want to see more, check out the canceled news on my YouTube channel. And come see me live this Friday and Saturday at the Fort Wayne Comedy Club in Indiana. Welcome back to another video on Jason Toya. Hey, welcome back. Today we're taking you guys through a 30 minute full body dumbbell workout. Yes. All right, so more specifically today, we're gonna focus on more beginner level strength exercises. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So if you're someone who's just beginning with strength training or learning how to use dumbbells or weights, this is a great workout for you to start off with. We're gonna give you some audio cues throughout the workout to help you with the form and engaging the proper muscles, yes. okay? So all you'll need for this workout is a pair of dumbbells. For reference, I'll be using a pair of 10 pound dumbbells. And I'll be using a pair of 20 pound dumbbells, all right? So for the workout format, we're gonna split this workout into two different sets. Each set will have 13 different exercises, starting with the lower body. So we're gonna have five lower body exercises, five upper body, and then three core abs exercises, all yep. right? We're going 40 seconds of work, 20 seconds of rest throughout the entire workout. But between those two sets, we'll give you a 60 second break to grab a drink, take a break, and get ready for the next set that's coming up, oh, yeah. all right? So like she said, there will be audio cues throughout the workout to make sure your form is correct and you're feeling the workout in the right areas. But there are some exercises that may be a little bit more difficult, so you can follow me for modifications. Exactly. So this is a full body workout, so we're gonna take you guys through a nice little warm up. Oh, yeah. Following the warm up, we're gonna get right into it. So All grab right. your mats, grab your weights, hey. and let's get to work. Peace.
Okay, first off, we're starting with front squats. You wanna keep the weight nice and tight to your body. You'll have your feet just outside of your hips and you'll want to sit as low as you can here. A big key to keep the tension out of your knees is to keep your weight in your heels. All right, let's start this workout out strong. Alright, next up we have the suitcase deadlift. So we're going to start with our feet hip distance apart and the weights at our sides. As you hinge back from your hips, you're going to put all the weight into your heels to feel tension in your glutes and hamstrings. As you drive up, you're going to keep your core nice and tight to protect your lower back. Next up, we have alternating front lunges. You'll want to step forward and again, keep the emphasis of your weight in your heels. Your knees should be at about 90 degrees as you drop that back knee as far as you can to the floor. If this is too difficult, you can follow me in a split squat by dropping that knee as far as you can. All right, if you're following the split squat for the modification, we're gonna switch here in three seconds. Next up is an alternating single leg deadlift. So just like the regular deadlift, we're gonna hinge from the hips, weight is back in our heels, and we're gonna feel that tension in our glutes and hamstrings. You're gonna elevate the opposite leg off the ground, keeping the toes pointing towards the ground, and engage your core as you drive up to protect your lower back. If you have trouble with balance, you can follow Juice for a modification and tap that toe to the ground. Next up, we're gonna get in that loaded glute bridge position. We'll have our heels tucked toward our body and then we're gonna lay that weight flat across our hips. We'll drive through our heels and squeeze our glutes at the top. If this is too difficult, you can take the weight off and just do this body weight.
Next up, we have a neutral grip chest press. So we're gonna start lying on our back, elbows close to your body and palms facing each other. You're gonna press the dumbbell straight up, lock the elbows and squeeze at the chest. You're gonna feel this in your chest muscles, but also in your triceps. Next up, we're gonna do a neutral grip row. We're gonna get into that loaded deadlift position. Keep the weight into your heels so that your hips and glutes are nice and loaded. Keep your core engaged so that your back is flat. And then we're gonna drive that weight up as we squeeze our shoulder blades together. You should feel this exercise in your middle back and biceps. Next up, we have a neutral grip shoulder press. So you're gonna start with the elbows nice and tight and palms facing each other. You're gonna press the dumbbell straight up, lock the elbows, and then return to the starting position, keeping the elbows tight on the way down as well. Keep your core nice and tight so your ribcage doesn't flare out and squeeze those glutes to protect your lower back. Next up, we have hammer curls. We're gonna get those weights into a neutral position. We're gonna keep those elbows nice and tight as we engage our biceps and drive the weight up to our shoulders. We're gonna return back down, keep those biceps engaged, but you don't want to swing the weight at the bottom of the movement. Next up, we have a French press. So we're gonna use a single dumbbell here. We're going to grab the dumbbell by the head, keeping one hand on top of the other, and you're going to press the dumbbell all the way up, locking your elbows, and you should feel your triceps here. But you wanna make sure to keep your rib cage pulled down and core engaged to protect your lower back.
Next, we have a loaded sit up. We're gonna get into that sit up position, keeping the weight nice and close to our body. We're gonna drive up and engage our core through that sit up. If you find that these are too difficult, you can place the weight by your side and do regular sit ups, or you can do loaded crunches as a modification. Next we have a plank pull through. So we're gonna start in a plank position with the dumbbell behind either palm and reach that opposite hand across to pull the dumbbell across the body. You're gonna keep your core nice and engaged and the hips neutral facing the ground. If you find it's a little too difficult keeping your hips down, you can modify this by placing your knees on the ground. Next up, we have a loaded side plank. So we're gonna get into that side plank position by stacking our feet on top of each other and your elbow should be right underneath your shoulder. You're gonna keep your hips nice and high with that weight right over the shoulders. If you find that this is too difficult on your core and your obliques or your upper body, you can drop your knees to the floor and keep your hips high. All right guys, in about five seconds, we're gonna do a quick switch to the other side. All right guys, great job on that first half. We're gonna use this time now to grab a drink, grab a towel and take a little break before we move on to the second half. So for the second half of the workout, we have a similar format but different variations of each exercise. So you're gonna notice some of the similar cues from the first half so that you can use those cues to focus on the form, practice that form and practice on engaging the correct muscles through each exercise. First up, we have a drop squat. We'll have our feet just outside of our hips with the weights in between our legs. We're gonna keep the weight into our heels, sit as low as you can, but keep your chest as tall as you can at the bottom of the movement. You'll squeeze your glutes at the top, and you should feel this in your glutes, your hamstrings, and your quads. All right, let's finish strong. Next up, we have a front-loaded deadlift. We're gonna start by having our feet hip distance apart. We're gonna hinge at the hips, keeping the weight back into the heels and the tension in our glutes and hamstrings. You're gonna drive up, but keep that core engaged so you protect your lower back. You should feel this in your glutes and hamstrings.
Next up, we have an alternating reverse lunge. So we'll take a big step back while keeping that front knee at 90 degrees while driving that back knee as far as we can to the floor. We'll keep the weight into the heels as we drive up. And if you find that this is too difficult, you can repeat that split squat by driving that knee as far as you can to the ground. If you're following the modification on the split squat, we're going to switch in about 5 seconds. Next up is a staggered stance deadlift. You're gonna start with your feet hip distance apart with your right toe behind your left heel. You're gonna hinge back in the hips, keeping all the weight back in the heels and the tension in the glutes and hamstrings. Again, you wanna keep your core nice and tight here to protect your lower back and you should feel your glutes and your hamstrings. All right guys, in about five seconds, we're gonna switch and bring that left foot forward. Next up, we have a loaded single leg glute bridge. So we're gonna get back into that glute bridge position with the weight across our hips. We're gonna drive through the heels as we lift our hips up with one leg to the sky. We'll alternate sides, but if you find that this is too difficult, again, you can drop one weight to the ground and do this body weight. Next up is a wide grip chest press. So we're gonna start on our backs with the elbows wide and we're gonna press the dumbbells all the way to the top, lock out the elbows and squeeze your chest at the top. Again here, similar to the neutral grip chest press, you should feel your chest and your triceps. Next up, we have a wide grip row. So we're gonna get back into that loaded deadlift position with our weight in our heels. Our glutes should be loaded and our core nice and tight to keep our back flat. We're gonna drive those elbows away from our body, squeezing those shoulder blades together. And you should feel your middle back and your biceps here.
Next up, we have a dumbbell military press. So we're gonna start with the elbows wide and press the dumbbells all the way up overhead, locking out at the top, and then bringing them back down, keeping the elbows wide. As you press up, you wanna keep that rib cage pulled down and core engaged to help protect your lower back. Next up, we have supine curls. So we're gonna have our palms facing the sky. We're gonna engage our biceps and drive that weight all the way up to the shoulders. You wanna control the weight down, and just like those hammer curls, you don't wanna swing or use your hips to get the weight up. Next up, we have a dumbbell skull crusher, and we're only gonna use one dumbbell here, holding the dumbbell at both heads. You're gonna keep your elbows in a fixed position and lower that dumbbell towards your head. Keep your elbows fixed and tight as you press the dumbbell all the way up, lock out at the top, and you should feel your triceps. Next up, we have a overhead sit-up. So we're gonna get back into that sit-up position, starting with the dumbbell right over our eyes. We're gonna engage the core as we sit up while keeping that dumbbell driven overhead. If you find that these are too difficult, you can do a dumbbell crunch as a modification, but you should feel this in your abs and your shoulders. All right, next up we have an alternating renegade row. So first we'll start in a plank position with a dumbbell behind either hand. We'll pull with the opposite arm, driving the elbow up as far as we can. The big key here is keeping those hips flat. That's gonna make sure your abs are engaged and you'll also feel your biceps and back here.
All right, guys, last exercise. We're gonna do a side plank raise. So we're gonna get back into that side plank position, stack those feet, elbows underneath the shoulders. We're gonna drop that weight to the floor, open up and drive it to the sky. Again, if you find that this is too difficult, just drop those knees to the ground and make sure you keep your hips high. guys in about five seconds we're going to do a quick switch to the other side goals and uh, your other goals and uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow also check those links in the description for all the other uh, non X material that came to make this video thank you guys again for watching and hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and see you tomorrow